and combustion measurements with our explicit goal of trying to improve signal integrity of those combustion measurements. The basis of our technology and, and the work that primarily our company does is develop based on optical sensors. We have a unique way of measuring an optical sensor. We produce the optical sensors that we utilize in a unique way. And this foundational technology platform allows us to these kind of core technologies into a variety of different, whether it's a, a different signal conditioners, different sensor types, whether it's temperature, vibration, or pressure, all of the sensor types that we can produce are all people need. The advantage of this comes down to no EMI susceptibility, high temperature capability, uh, and there are a number of others. Those benefits really trickle down to the different industries that we, we approach. Our target is to provide novel data for different industries for the end user to, to monetize. What this means for us in our utilities or in the gas turbine is an opportunity to develop new sensors for monitoring combustion dynamics. We currently have a project with GE Aviation. It's publicly announced, at least this much of it, uh, is publicly announced with, with a target of developing new sensor technology in order to measure combustion instability to actively control the engine to better improve its efficiency. There is a, a target of 1% fuel reduction with this added data into the control loop. Uh, and this project is developing over the last four, three years, and it will continue for another year. We have started in 2019 with lab-based validation of the technology and of the sensor techniques. We went through GE Aviation Technical Approval essentially design reviews, detailed design reviews, lab validation, uh, that the sensor could survive the engine that we would be targeting. And we are this year going through active engine testing and rig testing as well, combustor rig testing. The goal is to, uh, is to see in 2022 input on uh, flying uh, test rig. The interesting aspect of what it is that we're developing is that it's not just useful for aviation, but it's also useful for power generation as well. So let's get into really what it is that we're trying to do. The, the intent of the ultra high temperature pressure transducer that we're building at FIBOS was to fill a technology gap. And this technology gap was told to us by a number of, of individuals in the industry, whether it comes from individuals from other sensor manufacturers, or individuals from the gas turbine OEMs directly. On an aircraft currently, you would be measuring static pressure, but you don't measure dynamic pressure. On R&D test rigs, you might, from a sensor, measure static pressure, but not dynamic. You might then have a separate sensor that collects your dynamic pressure data. Really what the limitation has, in order to get dynamic data, you would typically need to use a piezoelectric element or a electrical sensor that is rated for high temperatures, but also for dynamic measurements. The gap there is that it doesn't provide static pressure. Coolite sensors, on the other hand, do provide static pressure. They do provide really great dynamic performance operating temperature. What we do as a company, as FIBOS, is we, we are trying to develop a sensor that overlaps all three of these, that can survive at high operating temperature. It can provide you static pressure, and it can provide you dynamic pressure, all from the same sensor device. The measurement chain that we utilize uh, has, has been developed by ourselves along with partners such as Gantner Instruments been able to integrate our signal conditioner into their product line, their Q-series product line. And our signal conditioner works on the approach of, we set a wavelength of light from our signal conditioner. That wavelength of light will go traverse the, the length of the optical fiber. It will reach the optical sensor itself. And then we will get a reflection back from that sensor. What we get back from the sensor is what we are trying to monitor, what we're trying to evaluate from an engineering parameter perspective. 
The optical sensor is a fiber grad, uh, gradient based sensor. And you can imagine this device is really a wavelength collectible mirror. We can define what wavelength of light that fiber grad grading will. And we can use that fiber grad grading as a sensing element because the pitch inside of that fiber grad grading defines what wavelength gets reflected. If we change the temperature or if there's a change in strain of the optical fiber, it changes the pitch of that, uh, of that FPG and therefore it changes the wavelength that gets reflected from that FPG. So if we were to package that FPG into a pressure transducer, when we induce strain onto the fiber as a result of pressure, we change the wavelength FPG detects or, or will reflect, sorry, uh, and we then monitor that change in reflection with our signal condition. This means that from the signal conditioner all the way to where the sensor is located, this is only an optical pathway. The sensing element is all optics. There are no electronics included with the, with the sensor itself. The measurement that we're doing is only done by optical means. For us, this has been an advantage because we can take advantage of the natural benefits of a fire. High temperature capabilities, low EMI, so, so no electrical uh, magnetic interference, no cable vibration issues as well. As of today, as of this year, we have been approved for use on R&D gas turbine engines, having passed vibration profile screening, having been gone through detailed design reviews. We have now completed the acoustic design, the acoustic length design, because our sensor is not yet flush mount internal to the combustor. We have an acoustic length in order to get from where the combustor is to the interface of the sensor. Acoustic length that has to be accommodated. And that's something that I'll get into in the next slides. We are trying to make this sensor replaceable for, for the existing measurement techniques that are used by OEMs. We want as much as possible by the sensor that could be either used in the existing port or existing hole that a dynamic pressure might be uh, deployed today or allow for parallel connection so that we can not only monitor our sensor, but in parallel monitor an existing dynamic pressure sensor. I say beer can here because that's the, the, the traditional nickname for, for what this sensor is. Uh, it looks like a, a beer can. Uh, the sensor is located remotely uh, I'll touch on that in the next slide. For, for us, we're targeting static pressure of up to, targeting dynamic pressure events of plus or minus 10 PSI, up to two kilohertz. We can go higher, but this is really our, our target uh, the frequency range. The transducer body would be under cowling on the engine. It's not internal to the engine case yet. Uh, and so the, the operating temperature of the, uh, of the sensor itself is limited to about 400 degrees C of a body temperature. However, the inlet gas temperature can be upwards of 1,000 degrees Celsius. In the bottom left, you can see an image of a borescope inspection plug, and our sensor is mounted just at the exit of the borescope plug. This, for us, is, at the moment, the closest that we can get to the combustor because of a lack of holes, uh, lack of availability to put the sensor flush down internal to the engine. When it comes to the incumbent of what's being used today for combustion measurements, what's common is the use of a beer can. Really, it's, it's a sensor that's remotely located from the engine test port. Usually the length of that isolation tube is anywhere from 18 to 24 inches. Inside of the beer can is typically a pressure sensor, a dynamic pressure sensor, probably a cool light uh, that will then have a semi-infinite tube attached to it as well. The challenge with this technique is the amount of pneumatic attenuation that you get as a result of having to locate the beer can remote from the event that you're trying to measure. The remote location of the sensor is as a result of trying to lower the operating temperature of the gases that hit the interface of the sensor itself. So because the sensor can't be rated for a higher temperature, it needs to be located which results in pneumatic attenuation, which then results in a low SNR 
when it comes to evaluating spectral peaks that might be occurring within your dynamic pressure signals. For us, the, the, the the simplest way to describe what we're, what we're doing and what we're working on is we're developing sensor technologies to allow us simply to locate the sensor closer to the event. Our goal is to get the sensor as close to the combustion event as possible, reducing the acoustic length, therefore reducing the pneumatic attenuation that, that occurs, and then providing a better spectral peak identification. You can see at the bottom as two examples of really what an FFP would show, the benefit of less pneumatic attenuation would be better resolution of peaks, of dynamic pressure peaks that are occurring in the engine as it's operating. Briefly, but this, this is our definition of what we mean by a better measure. We want to increase, increase the transducer operating temperature. We want to install that transducer closer to the combustor. We want less pneumatic attenuation. Therefore, we achieve higher signal to noise ratio. We get less amplification of noise when adjusting data in a dynamic calibration. And therefore, that leads us to better spectral peak identification. When it comes to examples of, of data here, this, this is simulated data. You can see at the top where you would have a traditional remote beer can, where you have that taper of your pressure amplitude relative to frequency. When you try to do a dynamic calibration, you can see in the, in the right-hand side, which is circled in red, when you try to adjust and amplify the peaks that you're measuring, you're also amplifying the noise. So the, the to determine what is real pressure events versus what is noise becomes very tricky as a result of the attenuation that's present. What we can achieve with, with our fiber optic sensor is getting closer allows us to have lower an pneumatic attenuation and therefore allows us to have a better signal to noise ratio when we complete the dynamic calibration. So the better spectral peak identification yield situation is that what you measure relative as a pressure uh, pressure amplitude ratio, what you measure on the sensor itself is exactly one to one what pressure event is occurring in the engine. Ideally, what you collect on the sensor matches perfectly to what is occurring inside of that engine. If you can achieve this one-to-one -one pressure ratio, then you would be able to understand where you have instabilities within the combustor as you run through different operating, operating conditions. And you can then push the operation of that engine closer to threshold because you know you're measuring the dynamic peak at the appropriate amplitude of which they're occurring in the engine. In the worst case scenario, you, you wouldn't want to see a pressure peak of 10 PSI and say, I'm off, my pressure amplitude ratio is only 10%, so that pressure peak is actually 100 PSI. That would be the worst case scenario. So you want as flat of a, uh, of a ratio as possible. The only way to achieve this that, that we've been able to, to do this is when we're able to flush mount directly where the event is occurring. The moment that you add an acoustic length, you start to see degradation of that pressure amplitude ratio. The current capabilities that we have highlight that with, with the, the, the beer can that exists today is you see this significant amount of attenuation that occurs, resulting in almost a 30% uh, 2 kilohertz range of the actual events that are occurring. So really, it, it, the problem's simple, is that because I'm, I have to remotely locate my sensor because it can't survive high temperature, I don't achieve the one-to-one -one pressure amplitude ratio that I want. When it comes to what we've been able to do today, getting as close to the engine without going into the engine, we're now close to about an 80% uh, pressure amplitude ratio. The benefit that we, we've been able to achieve as well is that we are relatively flat compared to the existing beer can approach. With this, we can do dynamic calibration easier and have better confidence in that dynamic calibration. You can see here some real world what we were able to collect in the lab. At the 
at the top, you can see, uh, oh, sorry, on the, on the left-hand side of the graph, you can see the gray line here at the pressure amplitude of one-to-one. -one. That is our reference sensor. So we use a, in, in, a, in the test case that we had, we used a PCB uh, piezoelectronics sensor that was flush mounted inside of the, the acoustic chamber. And that was our reference device. We then flush mounted our optical sensor as you can see the picture, and we are able to achieve close to a one-to-one. -one. The, the fact that it's uh, a little bit above is delta between uh, the, the, the two sensors themselves, as well as fluctuations in the, the test rig. I, I'll touch on the test rig shortly. When we look at what the, the second option is here presented in green, this is the, the traditional use case that we're gonna be constrained to. We're going to have an acoustic length as a result of the BSI plug length which could be anywhere from 40 to 100 millimeters in length. And then the sensor will be located immediately exit of that BSI plug. We, in this example case, we use a cool light as, as the, the reference sensor to collect at that location. And then we compared it against the beer can. The beer can you can see is presented here in, in blue. The attenuation becomes quite significant as you go higher in frequency. The test apparatus that we use for, for the testing and validation has been a, a, an interesting device. The, the traditional calibration technique of how the beer can was being done was on a low amplitude pressure test device. We wanted to create a test picture that would provide equivalent dynamic pressure amplitudes to what we expect to experience on an engine. So in this motor, with a high powered air supply. And in on the front of the motor is a disc perforated plate that will essentially allow air to pass or not pass at different frequencies. The benefit of this technique is we're able to achieve dynamic pressures of a couple of PSI, which are what it is that we're trying to achieve while we're on engine. So we've been able to do extensive lab testing with both our optical sensors with other piezoelectric sensors with blue light devices, as well as with traditional beer cans to get an understanding of what is the impact from an acoustic length perspective, what is the impact relative to temperature, and then what is the impact relative to pressure. With all of this, the, the goal here is if we can provide better spectral peak identification, we can then trickle down this pathway where you can achieve higher confidence of safe di uh, combustion dynamics. You can introduce new combustion conditions as a result so that you can reduce or modify the fuel that you burn. The end result here is either a reduction in fuel burned overall, which could be a reduction in CO2 emissions or a modification of the engine map to reduce NOx emissions or SOx, depending on, on what the eventual target is. The goal is to provide that allows the engine control to be adjusted to improve either emissions or reduce fuel consumption. The benefit to the industry here for, from our perspective is that in an R&D application, we're trying to achieve as close to a one-to-one -one pressure amplitude as possible. As we continue to mature the technology, as we push the, the pressure transducers flush mount into the engine casing, we'll achieve that one-to-one -one pressure amplitude which will improve overall data processing. There will no longer need to be dynamic calibrations. There's no longer post-processing of the data. The dynamic pressure that will be, will be one-to-one -one equivalent of what's occurring in the engine. With this, the measurement of these combustion instabilities, we all, it'll prove the, the confidence of what it is that you're measuring and allow for modifications or changes in design based on better data quality that's being collected. For commercial deployments, what we want to achieve in the future, put these dynamic pressure sensors onto both aviation and power generation engines so that adaptive fuel control can be deployed. The eventual goal with this is fuel reduction or emission reduction, potentially both. The other added advantage of this is predictive maintenance benefits, is if we can measure dynamic uh, pressure, we can understand in dynamic frequencies that might be occurring in an engine. Engines are fairly representative 
within a model line, they'll all have very similar amplitudes as well as frequencies of dynamic pressure events in different objects. If you were to know the rotational speed N1, N2 of the engine, then you would be able to correlate your rotational speed relative to net dynamic pressure events. You would be able to then, if you monitor this continuously, change and vary your maintenance schedule depending on what the dynamic pressure events are showing relative to this. If you see a new frequency appear, if you see a change in frequency or a significant change in the amplitude at a given frequency, that would be an indication that there might be an issue with the engine itself. This adds the more contextual information for operators of engines. If we can also provide static pressure, then in the same sensor, we can displace what's currently used for static pressure on engines with now a device that provides you both static and dynamic pressure in the same sensor device. So the eventual goal will not to be increased part count on an engine, but instead to displace the current sensor that only provides you one parameter and add a new sensor that provides you multiple parameters. Thank you very much for the opportunity to, to share the work that we're doing. I'm happy to take any questions if there are any. If not, I appreciate you all for, for the attention. Thank you.